guys, this is Bridget from the DeVay Homestead. Welcome back. Today we are going to make this baby hat and a matching baby blanket. This is like my other set that I called the Hurdle Stitch Baby Blanket with Border, even though as you, if you've seen my blog, it's not technically the Hurdle Stitch, it's the Bridget's version of a Hurdle Stitch. Nonetheless, it's beautiful and I made this one without a border. So if you want one with a border, I did a garter ridge edge on my other one. You can check out my YouTube channel. So for this one, we have the hat and the matching blanket that is just super cute. And then at the end, I am going to embellish my baby blanket and the hat by adding roses and leaves. So I'll show you that at the end. I have on a separate tutorial how to make the roses and how to make the leaves and you can check that also on my YouTube channel but I am going to show you in this video how to attach them to this particular hat and baby blanket. So let's get started. We are going to start our blanket by making a slip knot with our yarn and placing that slip knot onto your anchor peg. For this baby blanket, we're going to be using all 41 pegs of our 41 peg loom. We're going to start out with peg 1, we're going to go all the way around to peg 41, and then turn back and go in the other direction, and then keep going back and forth to make our blanket. To start our cast on, we are going to take our working yarn behind peg number 1, and we're going to e-wrap that peg in what looks like a cursive E. So we are going to continue on and we are going to wrap every peg on our loom. Now we are going to do the second part of our cast on and that's going to be using the U-wrap version of our knit stitch. To do the U-wrap version on this peg that we've already wrapped, we're going to come again and half wrap it and knit off. And gently pull our working yarn. So I'm going to take a second and push down the loops that are already on my loom and that's going to give me room to come back and do the second part of my cast on which is going to be the U-wrap version of my knit stitch. Okay, so to finish our cast on, going back in the counterclockwise direction, we are going to take our working yarn and we are going to half wrap the peg in a U-wrap. And we're going to continue that all the way around to finish our cast on. So go ahead and finish your pegs all the way around back to peg one and meet me back here and then we will start our baby blanket. So I'm coming back on finishing up on peg one and I am finished my cast on. Now we are ready for row number one. So for row number one we're going to be going in the clockwise direction and we're going to start with peg one through 41. So any of our rows that we start it's going to be a four row repeat and whether we're going in the clockwise direction or the counterclockwise direction we're always going to skip the first peg. Oop. Yep, my first peg's right there. So we're always going to skip this first peg and the reason we skip this first peg is it's going to give us that nice pretty crocheted edge along the side of our blanket. If not, it's going to have like a weird jagged edge and kind of look knotted on the side and we don't want that. So we're always going to skip the first peg. When we get to the end of the row, which you'll see here in a second, we're always going to knit the last peg. And again, 
that's going to give us that really pretty crocheted edge. So like I said, our pattern is going to be a four row repeat. Rows one and two are gonna be identical to each other. And we're gonna start the row out by, like I said, always skipping peg number one. And then we are going to purl one, knit one, all the way around. And then when we get to the end, we are going to end in a purl one and then knit the last peg with a U wrap. So let's just start at the beginning of the row and work our way around. So we're going to skip the first peg and then we're going to begin our purl one, knit one, repeat. So I'm going to purl by taking my hook and going underneath the loop that is on the peg. I'm going to go over my working yarn. I'm going to scoop up my working yarn. I'm going to take the old loop off of the loom and put the new loop on and gently pull my working yarn. So that is my purl stitch. For my knit stitch, it's going to be the E-wrap version of the knit stitch. And to do that, we're going to take our working yarn and we're going to go behind the peg and wrap it in what looks like a cursive E. If you want, you can go ahead and knit this off. I don't. I like to keep doing this purl knit with just the wrap without knitting it off all the way till I get to the end of my row. Then I come back and knit all my knit row knit pegs off. It's just easier for me that way because as I'm going I can see exactly where I'm at especially if I put my project down and come back to it. So we have purl one knit one and we're just going to keep repeating that all the way around and then I'll show you what's going to happen when we get to the end of the row. So I'm coming to the end of my row. This is peg 40. I'm going to purl. And then for my ending stitch, instead of doing the E-wrap version of the knit stitch, I'm going to do the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. So I finish row one. I can go ahead and take my beginning yarn off my anchor peg and just push that into my loom. We will weave that in later. And I'm going to take a second and knit off any pegs that have two loops on them. So for peg, excuse me, for row two, now we're going to be working back in the right direction, going counterclockwise for row two. Just like before, like row one, we are going to skip peg one, and we are going to start our pet purl one, knit one, repeat, going in this direction. So go ahead and finish off this row. And remember when you get to the end, you're going to purl and then do the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. So go ahead and finish that row and then meet me back here. I just finished up row two and I'm going to go ahead and scoot all my loops down to get ready for row three. 
So rows three and four of our four row repeat are going to be the same as each other and they are going to be knit rows. So every peg is going to be a knit. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to skip peg number one and then we're going to knit pegs two through 41 in our E-wrap knit stitch. So remember when we are E-wrapping a bunch in a row, we can go ahead and wrap a bunch, just whatever feels comfortable, and then knit those off. And then e-wrap some more, knit off, and just continue all the way down to you fit to you finish peg 41. I'm down to my last three pegs and I'm just going to e-wrap and knit off. For row four going in the other direction I'm going to take a second and move down my loops from row three to give me room for my e-wraps. Now turning back in the other direction I'm going to skip peg one and I'm going to E wrap and knit off every other peg in the row. So go ahead and finish off row four and then meet me back here. So I finished my fourth row of my four row repeat. From here to the rest of the blanket, what you're going to do is repeat that four row repeat. So you're going to do two rows of your purl one, knit one and then you're going to do two rows of knit stitches. When you get almost to the length of blanket you want, you want to end after you finish row one and two. So we don't want to finish off rows three and four at the edge of our blanket, and this is why. I'll show you when we get a little bit further in the blanket. I'll check back in with you. But we started off our blanket in that knit one, purl one, rib stitch which is going to keep our blanket from rolling up. If we do the two knit stitches at the end then the sides are going to curl. If you want that then that's fine but then you need to start your blanket also with the two knit stitches so it'll be even on both sides. But since we started this one with the purl one knit one two row repeat we want to end our blanket in the purl one, knit one, two row repeat. So go ahead and work on your blanket and I'll check back in when I get about halfway or so through and then we'll move on to our bind off. I'm just checking in with you guys. I am part way through my blanket, probably a little bit more than half. I just ran out of yarn and I just tied on some new yarn and kept going and I just want to show you how awesome this is looking so far. The pattern is just amazing. This nice texture it gives. The sides are laying down nice and flat. No curl. So this is an awesome pattern. So I'll check in with you guys when we get to the end. I am finished the length that I want for my baby blanket. And now we're ready to do the modified bind off. For our, for our bind off, the one thing we want to keep in mind is we want to keep our stitches loose. We don't want to take our working yarn and pull super tight. If we do that, then that's going to make our bind off really tight and it's going to pull the end in like this and it's going to pull the sides in and have that tight line of cross which a lot of people find when they do their bind off because they are being too tight with their working yarn. So you want to keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a regular flat panel bind off but we're going to add a modification to give us some extra loops across to give us um, a nice edge that's not so tight across. 
So the way we're going to do this is going back in this direction. I'm going, this is my starting yarn. I'm going to E-wrap peg two and knit off. I'm going to take the loop that is on peg two and I'm going to move it to peg one. And here is where people usually will take their working yarn and pull it super tight and tighten this up, but then that's going to tighten up your edges to make the end really tight, and we don't want that. So you want to just make sure it's a you tighten it up just a hair, but not really tight. So then you're going to knit over, move that last loop over, and again, very gently just pull on your working yarn just a little bit. Now we're going to add in the modification, and we're going to do this right now, and then we're going to do it about every three or four times. You don't have to keep a chart or write it down. There's no exact science, but you want to add those in there about every three to four times. So what we're going to do for the modification is we're going to take our working yarn. We are going to first wrap our last peg. Then we're going to come and e-wrap our second to last peg. We're going to knit off both those pegs. And just like before, we're going to take the second to last peg, move it over to the last peg, knit off, move the last peg over, and you're done. Okay. Now we're going to go back to our regular without the modification. So we're going to e-wrap the second to last peg, knit off, move the second to last peg over to the last peg, knit off, move the last peg over. And we're just going to repeat that a couple times before we add our modification. And once you get going, this goes pretty fast. Once you get your rhythm down, because you're just repeating the same thing over and over. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and add a modification right here. So I'm going to wrap both pegs, knit off, move the second to last peg to the last peg, knit off, move the last peg over. Now back to our regular. it off, move it over. And do it one more time. Again, I'm going to add the modification. I'm going to wrap the last peg and the second to last peg. And I think you have the pattern down from here. So you just want to go ahead and finish up all the way around and meet me when we get back towards the very last few loops and I will show you how to do those. I'm coming down to my last few stitches. Going to add one more of the modified. Down to my last stitch, so I'm going to do just like the other ones. I'm going to e wrap, knit off, 
move it over, knit off, then I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to do what kind of looks like a pearl. Grab that yarn, pull it through. I can now take it off my loom and pull that up to tighten it. Now I'm going to take a yarn needle I'm going to thread that on so we can work it in. Before we do that real quick, I'm going to just show you how pretty the edge is, if you can see that. It's just nice, clean, looks like a crocheted edge, and we will look at both sides together here in just a second. So I'm just going to take this just like any other time. I'm going to weave it in. Then I want to make a knot to secure it. And because I'm doing it on a blanket, I'll usually weave in a couple more times and make another knot just because I don't want this whole blanket to unravel at any point. And I know if it's going to a baby, it's probably going to get washed a lot. So I'm going to make a second knot. That's just my preference. And then I'm just going to weave that in really good. that off and our blanket is complete let's see if I can zoom out here and you can see how pretty our blanket is this beautiful stitch so you have no edge to it but because we use the stitches we did as you can see, it lays perfectly flat. We have no curl to the blanket. It's just flat and nice. Beautiful, beautiful blanket. To start our baby hat, I'm using the same Charisma yarn that I used on the blanket. Then make a slip knot and place it onto my anchor peg. For our hat, we're going to do a double e-wrap cast on method. So we're going to double e-wrap and knit off each peg. So finish your cast on and meet me back here. Once we finish our cast on, we're ready for the brim of our baby hat. For the brim of our baby hat, we are going to do a knit one, purl one, rib stitch, and we're going to do that for four rows. We're going to be using the e-wrap version of our knit stitch, so we're going to take our yarn and wrap it for our knit stitch, followed by a purl. I like to leave my knit stitches on my loom, that way I can see where I'm at. If you want to knit them off now, you can go ahead and knit them off but I like to wait till I finish the row and then I knit them off. Once you start at your row, you can go ahead and take your starting yarn off the anchor peg and bring it to the inside of your loom and just let that hang and we will weave that in when we are finished. So you want to go ahead and do your knit purl repeat for four rows for the brim of your baby hat and then meet me back here. Once we finish our four rows for the brim of the hat, now we're ready for the body. Our body is going to be a four row repeat. 
So just similar to the blanket we did, but a little bit different. We're gonna start off with doing two knit rows. So rows one and two are going to be knit rows using our E-wrap knit stitch. So go ahead and do your two knit rows and then meet me back here for rows three and four. Once you finish up rows one and two of the four row repeat, we're going to move on to rows three and four. For rows three and four, it's going to be a knit one, purl one repeat, just like we did in the brim of the hat. Knit one, purl one. And we're going to repeat that for two rows. Once you finish your four rows, you're going to keep repeating the two rows of knit stitches, the two rows of knit one, purl one, until you get to the length of hat that you desire. And you always want to end in an all knit row. For the baby hat, the length that I like, that I feel is perfect for a little baby, is I, do si I go through this four row repeat four times, so I have 16 rows and then I do two more rows of knit stitch. So I do 18 total rows so I go through the four row repeat basically four and a half times. So you can go as many or as few rows as you would like but make sure you're ending in an all knit row and then meet me back here and we'll do the drawstring bind off. Once I'm finished my rows, I'm ready for my drawstring bind off. Once we finish our drawstring bind off, now we need to weave in our starting yarn. What I'm going to do for that is I'm going to weave it in just a little bit away from the edge and then I'm going to make a knot with my yarn and then finish weaving in my tail. Now I can turn it right side out, and there we have it. Our hat is complete. So to sew my leaves and my rows onto my hat, I'm going to first decide where I want to place them. So I'm going to just kind of figure out where I want to place everything, and then I'm going to begin to sew it. So. I have taken my yarn and put it on a yarn needle and I'm just going to sew across here to attach it to my hat because I want the this part of the leaf to kind of stick up. So I am going to go just a little bit this way just to secure that. And since the back part is going to be on the inside of the hat, I'm not really going to worry about what that looks like, unlike the edge of a blanket. So I'm just going to sew across here, 
And this part is also going to be covered up by my rose for the most part. So I'm just going to stitch that down. So see, I want this part to kind of stick up a little. If you wanted it flat, then you would just go around and do it flat, but I want it to stick up. So I'm going to make a knot and weave in my ends and then I'm going to sew on my other leaf and then we'll do the rows. So go ahead and finish your other leaf and then meet me back here. So I just attached the leaves and now I'm going to attach the rows. When I made the rows, I finished off each of these ends and weaved them in and then I left them according to my video I showed that way when I put it on the project I'll have two that I can use together I can use them separately or if I cut one off I've already weaved it in and so that's what I'm going to do since um, these have already been weaved in I'm just going to cut one off I could use them together if I wanted to and now I'm going to put this on a yarn needle and just sew it to my hat and I'm going to bring it down in the center and then I'm going to come up and around through the side loops so I'm just going to go like here and I'm just going to kind of whip stitch it so down and then up grabbing the edges let me see if I can show that grabbing the edges of the petals at the bottom as I go but just at the very bottom because I want my rows to still stick up so go ahead and finish off your rows and then we'll move on to the blanket So I already did the baby hat and now I'm going to do the blanket. So for the baby hat, this was going to be the inside of the hat so I didn't have to really worry about it being neat or clean but on our blanket, whatever we do is going to be shown on the other side. So we want to be as clean as possible. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to sew my leaves one at a time to the back of my rose and then I'm going to use the rose color since it'll kind of blend in with the pink to the hat so go ahead and take both your leaves I'm showing you one right here and using this string your yarn sew it to the back of the rose and then take your other leaf and sew it to the back of the rose this side but leave the pink and then we're going to use the pink and then we're going to sew that to our blanket trying to be as clean as we can it won't look really bad and it'll blend in um, but we want to make sure we're doing the green to the rose so that's not shown on the back so go ahead and put this on a yarn needle this one I can actually cut this is the one from the tip that came through and so I'm going to put the other one on a yarn needle and I'm going to sew it to my rows and then I'll do the other leaf to the other side of the rows and then we'll be ready to attach it to our blanket. Now I'm ready to attach this to the blanket. So I sewed the leaves onto my rows that way you wouldn't see any of the part I sewed on through the blanket. So now I'm going to sew the rows to the blanket and when I do I'm just going to sew it on like I normally would going around and I'm going to try to be kind of as neat as possible when I go around so it'll kind of look okay on the back side. It'll be fine. It'll kind of hide in there. So I want mine to sit kind of in the corner a little bit at an angle so I'm just going to go into my blanket 
and then I'm just going to sew it around just like you normally would. So go ahead and sew your rows onto your blanket. And once we have sewed on our rows, we have our completed blanket and matching hat. And as you can see from the back, you can hardly see where we sewed that on. It really will blend in. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you guys later. Bye.